Hi, Tam Wrigley from iStyle TV, and I'm really excited to be launching a brand new segment called I Inspire here on iStyle TV. And our first guest is Chrissy Swan. Ta da! <laughs> You hit our screens in 2003 on mm -hmm. everyone's favourite house guest on Big Brother. Yes. From there, your career just skyrocketed. Mm. What have been some of your highs and lows throughout the last 12 years? Um, well, look, the whole thing has been a high, really. Mm. Um, I, I did Big Brother in 2003, so it's 12 years ago. Mm. God, it's a long time, isn't it? Um, it's like getting back to your high school reunion. I know, I know. I was like, <laughs> God, that's a long time. Um, but I was an advertising copywriter before mm. I did Big Brother, so um, I never thought I would work in TV or radio, mm. of course, because mm. I'd sorted out my career and that was what I was doing. So um, it's been a great surprise and uh, a great thrill, really. Mm. Did you ever think be being on a show like Big Brother would launch you down a different career path? No, I didn't. And um, I think that's probably been weirdly the secret to to my success mm. in in that i never thought that that was what i wanted to do and i had absolutely no aspirations whatsoever uh, i thought i would do the show uh, as a joke mm. to, because i thought my friends would find it funny and they did and then i would just go back to my real life and i think because i really didn't have any desire sometimes that's looked weirdly favorably mm. upon by people making decisions i think a lot of reality tv people make the mistake of, the, of, of doing a show like that mm. and there are so many more now mm. um, in order to launch a career and so they get disappointed when it doesn't happen. Mm. I think it's, I feel very fortunate that it wasn't what I planned and it, and it happened. Because so. a lot of people think that, don't they now? Because, you know, they think, oh, yeah. I'll get onto a reality TV show and it will just send me down the path I want to yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's, you know, it's actually Misleading. very rare to mm. get a job and a career from a reality TV show, mm. even though the um, misconception is that it, you know everyone gets a job afterwards. There's a very maybe five people that and have got jobs, mm. yeah, and and been able to make them last. Yeah. So you're being obviously a very busy mum yes. and and huge in TV and in radio. How do you manage your work life balance? Well, look. I think the work-life balance thing is a is a myth, to be honest. Mm. I don't think it exists. I don't think um, you can raise a family and work full time and ever feel like you're coping. Mm. Mm. I really don't think that's possible. And mm. I think the sooner women realise that it is a myth, that it's actually unachievable. Yeah. Um, the happier you will be. I if you, you've got to embrace the chaos of it. You're yeah. never going to have order. Yeah. You're and really I think not. if you have a, like I know with my partner, he's very supportive in everything that I do. So if I think if you have that support network, even from your partner, yeah, that will just you know, yes, you are busy and you, you, you've got to race all over the country doing things, but you've got your husband there to, yes. to run the house. He, he becomes the house mum for you while yeah. you're away. Yeah, mm. I mean, there's also no work-life balance in that role either. Mm. Mm. I just think it's a myth across <laughs> the board. I really do. Whether you're working or whether you're at home with kids. This idea of work-life balance, where you wake up in the morning and you feel like everything's in control, um, doesn't happen. It's just not going to happen, no. and you just need to embrace that, accept that as it is, and and try and find some some joy and order aside. Having said that, this is the first year um, in 12 years where I haven't had a full-time job, mm. where I've had to get out of bed, get in my car, be at a desk at a certain time, mm. um, and I'm really enjoying that, and I find that. Um, I'm doing some TV which is block recorded mm. and so I do this big intensive concentrated chunk of work and then you get to sit back and relax yeah and I find psychologically I'm feeling a lot better this year than mm. I have because mm. um, I feel like I've got more time yeah yeah mm. So looking back over your your life, if you could give yourself, your 15 year old self, one piece of advice, yeah. what would it be? Um, look, go with the flow, mm. go with the flow. I think, you know, teenagers now and probably back then in the dark ages when I was 15, <laughs> um, 
you know, there's a lot of pressure on what are you going to be when you grow up. We, we do it to our kids, people asking my six-year-old, what are you going to be when you grow up? And it's just not, in, it's not that important. No. And, and really that's the thing, a, when you're in high school, 11 and 12, they sit there and go, you need to know what you want to do when you leave school. You totally don't yeah. need to do. There is, there is no way, I think, that a 17-year-old knows themselves well enough or their place in the world to know what they want to do. Mm, mm. 17, oh, no. I mean, how ridiculous. So, you know, my advice to my 15 year old self and anyone who's 15 is um, just have a good time. Mm, mm. Have a good time and, and work on your character because that's really what is going to hold you in good yeah, stead. Yeah. So you're fresh out of the jungle. Yeah. My goodness, that was just crazy. How was that whole experience? You've, you're you out. Know, it was. The jungle was really hard. <laughs> it really was. And, um, you know, there were days where, many days, most days, I just didn't want to be there, couldn't cope with it. Mm. Um, Besides the fear of maybe getting attacked by some wild animal in yeah, the middle of the night, what other did challenges you? did you face? Well, the boredom was huge. Yeah. Um, you know, like it or not, we our lives are full of stimuli mm. and I think we've got used to that constantly having something to read or look at or see yep. or someone to talk to mm. always and I feel like it was a real awakening in communication mm. because we're so used to doing it online and texting yeah, and, yeah. and then there we were, we had nothing but human beings and I wanted to Google people. Yeah. <laughs> I was in there going, I just want to Google Maureen McCormack, you know, Marsha Brady, I want to know what's going on but I had to actually ask her questions yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, Merv Hughes, I wanted to know about his career and I just wanted to Google it but, um, you know, I, I think even though it was incredibly difficult, there was a lot great about it as well in in that. You know, I had to interact with mm. human beings. Mm. Which, Maybe I should send my 13-year-old in Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's worth doing. It's worth yeah. doing. It was an eye-opener. And just living with nothing mm. Mm. was really interesting. And I think a bit of that has rubbed off. I think, mm. you know, you sort of go down the rabbit hole of excess and acquisition of things. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes it gets out of control before you even mm. realise it. Um, so that was good. Yep. And even though it was hard, I'm, I'm glad I did it because A, there was an end point. <laughs> um, and B, it's good, it's good to do difficult things mm. as well. Mm. It's, it's, not, it, it's not a bad thing to be frightened or uncomfortable yeah, occasionally. Yeah. So what was it about I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here that drew you to that project? Well, it was a few things. Um, for the first time I was available, mm. so I stopped full-time work on December 5th and the show started in January. Mm. And there was a lot of television shows that I wanted to be part of over the last um, 10 years that mm. I couldn't be because I had to do, you yeah. know, I had to be somewhere else every yeah. morning um, for breakfast radio. So I was excited about the show. I'd read about it. I knew it was going to be um, fun. I love reality Anything TV. with Julia Morrison, it's got to be fun. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. And then I found out Julia was hosting <laughs> yeah. and I thought, well, then I have to do it. Yeah because she is just golden yep. and um, I wanted to be a part of it and I knew the crew. Mm. Um, Peter Abbott was the executive producer on that show and was also the executive producer on my Big series of Big Brother. Mm. Um, so I knew that there would be, that it would be a nice production. I would, I would be mm. looked after as well as they could. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it was a difficult decision obviously because mm. I've got three small mm. children and I've never even worked one night away from home. Yep. But on the other side of the coin, um, it was a job mm. and it suited me time-wise and um, I just lost my job yeah, and yeah. I'm the breadwinner. So yeah. Um, you said, yeah, why not? It, yeah, it wasn't really a tough decision to mm. make. How protected are you with those reality TV shows? And, and you mean, you're in the middle of the jungle yeah. uh, in Africa. Is there some sort of safety barriers or...? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they had rangers that would patrol the camp um, mm. all night. Mm. So we never saw them. Occasionally we'd see a shadow in the distance. But yeah, <laughs> it was that. Um, but we were very well protected. Yep. But it was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It was in a nature reserve about 10 minutes out of Kruger National Park. Mm. And 
when you say national park or nature reserve, you sort of think of, you know, ones around that yeah. you can go to here. Get it's not like the that. worst thing you get is eaten by a mozzie. Exactly. <laughs> no, and there's no, you know, coin operated barbecues and <laughs> stuff like that. It was the wilderness. Yeah. There were animals everywhere mm -hmm. and particularly baboons and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff, which can be pretty vicious. But they did have security and, mm. and all that. We did feel safe, apart from a couple of nights when the power went out. And um, because, the, you know, they had, to tr they had to light the campsite mm. as if it was a studio, mm. so it looked good on television, um, all of a sudden plunged into absolute... <gasps> Darkness. pitch black darkness and that's when we sort of went I would have freaked I'm scared of the dark really in the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah it was really yeah it, that was scary yeah yeah mm. so where do you see yourself five, five years from now five years from now probably just doing the same thing mm. to be honest I mean it's a great privilege to work in television and radio it's really fun yeah. and I really love it and um, I've got three kids, so I'll probably be working till I'm 85. <laughs> uh, so five years, yeah, just doing more of yep. the same. I've got some exciting television coming up this year mm. and probably next year. Mm. I was going to um, say, what's next for you? Yeah, for well, yeah. I'm doing the Spelling Bee, the Great Australian Spelling oh, Bee. Oh, awesome, yeah. Which I'm really excited about. So that's a... So a big um, one for the kids to sit and watch too. Yes, it's a prime time show on 10 with Grant Denyer. Mm. And I'm a spelling nerd, so it's right up my alley. <laughs> Um, I can't wait. And I was a spelling champion at school. You're going to have your little glasses on it. And you're oh, yeah. It. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to be sort of backstage with um, with the kids yeah. and the parents, sort of finding out how they're feeling and... Testing um, on their words before they go I on stage. I can't wait. And the kids are incredible. I mean, yeah. they're just so clever, you can't believe it. Mm. Well, thanks for joining us on our brand new segment, I Inspire, here on iStyle TV. Be sure to subscribe to iStyle TV on YouTube, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. From all the team here at iStyle TV, I'm Tam Wrigley and we'll see you next time. I was going to bring it today. I actually bought a whole roll of bubble wrap because I heard that my mum is addicted to it. What do you do about the bubble wrap that you love? That's my mum. Oh, is that your mum?